Get ready, anglers, as we head to the beaches this weekend where you can catch anything from whiting and pompano to snook, flounder, and redfish. That's right, Bree. We're loading up our carts with our sand fleas, our fish bites, and we're going to take you on this out to the surf here on the Florida Insider Fisher Report, which starts now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, Surf Edition. Rick, we missed you last week so much, but this week we are doing a little surf fishing and celebrating something very special. It what? is your birthday. How Happy about birthday. That? We put together some photos of you when you were little. Oh in my age. gosh. Same it height. seems like it was just the other day when I was driving that boat with my grandfather oh. over in the Bahamas. Like 1989, Alaska guided, lived in a tent for four months on that river. Oh man. Made me pretty tough. And there's my beautiful family, beautiful wife, family my now. two boys, and my daughter in law, Santana. But Bree. Yes. You have a special edition bringing home the Snappa shirt. I do. I wore it just for you. It was made just for your birthday. So happy birthday. Here you are. Ow. We got to get these on our website. People We're going to put them on. You guys there. are going to If you want to bring them. it home, Snappa, just go at our website and request it, and we'll yes, make sure yes. we can sell you want. Custom orders right here. Exactly. All right, well, we're definitely in for a fun show, especially because Dave at the CCA Workbench is the surf fishing king. Dave, I know you have a lot of tips for us today. I, I thought I was the wizard. Now you I'm were the king. all of the I went above. from the wizard to the king. When it comes I'll to surf it. fishing, you're the wizard, you're the king, I'll you're the guru. It. I'll take it. We're going to talk a lot oh, about it. We, we got we got Courtney here too. She's going to go about all, all our, about our fish stuff too. Oh, it's going to be fish good. Fish bites. Fish bites. All right. Well, let's start by exploring the surf in the real legend Central East region with Captain Jim Ross. Go for it, Jim. You know, Bree, there are so many places in the Central East region where anglers can get out and surf. You know, we've got the Real Legends region has over a hundred miles of beaches that guys and gals can get out on. You know, our barrier islands span from Vero Beach all the way up to New Smyrna Beach. Now, most surf anglers stick to like 10 to 13 foot long surf rods, and they put these in a sand spike and just, you know, kind of watch for the tip to, to wiggle around whenever they're out there surf fishing. On the business end of their line is generally a two drop or three drop surf rig and about a six ounce Sputnik style sinker. Now, this is passive surf fishing. It's the kind that you see the most. Then you have the guys that like to actively hunt for fish in the surf zones. They usually have like a seven and a half to nine foot long lightweight graphite rod with a pin slammer or a pin authority reel on it. The 5500 and 6500 size seems to work pretty good whenever you match it up with that size rod. On this rig, they'll tie a jig, a lip diving plug, a popping big popper plug, a large spoon, um, because they're chasing tarpon, snook, bluefish, jacks, sharks, and other predator fish. And so, you know, you can even got a, you even got a, a, a group of guys that do it like I do, and we attack the surf from the outside of the surf break. Guys in a boat or in a kayak, we sit on that outside edge and look for fish cruising that surf break or cast into the surf to catch fish year round. And I've got a picture here of a nice shark, which is a typical thing that we catch here on our beaches on a regular basis. This fish was caught just outside of the surf break at Melbourne Beach. Now staying inshore, redfish action is getting better every day in the banana and the mosquito lagoons right now. The water temps are in the mid 80 degree range and these fish are actively targeting small bait fish along mangrove covered shorelines. Mahara, pigfish, croakers, pinfish, fingerling mullet, these are all great live offerings that you can cast up one of those tree branches and roots. Now, if you're sight casting though to cruising fish, a saltwater assassin four inch sea shad tail rigged with a soft, on a, you know, that soft plastic rigged on a one eighth ounce spring lock, or maybe even a quarter ounce if you're fishing a little bit deeper areas or have some current up around the New Smyrna area. That's where we're getting these reds on and most of our reds are running 20 to 30 inches. I've got a nice picture of one right here that we caught out of the Banana River the other day. Nice, what a beautiful day you had that day, bub. It was gorgeous, Rick. Let's now swinging offshore mutton snapper, <laughs> we've had some really good mutton snapper action here on the reefs between Vero Beach and Sebastian Inlet. Most of these are in that 20 to 40 foot range. They're, they're pretty shallow right now. And guys are using 20 to 30 foot liters that are 30 to, four pound, 30 to 40 pounds. And fluorocarbon is gonna be your best friend when you're doing this. A live pilchard or a chunk of ballyhoo seems to be working best for these fish. 
And some of those fish are actually, you'll get some of those bigger fish out onto the 90 foot ledge with that same kind of a rig. Here's a nice mutton snapper that Mike Brown sent me the other day, a picture of it that a uh, young lady he had out. And there's just some good sized muttons right now. Nice. And our last species is triple tail. These things are holding on the outer edge of the surf break. So guys fishing from the surf can actively catch these with a float rig, like a float uh, and a shrimp. Uh, those R&R floats or any kind of a heavy duty float works really, really good. So get yourself a live shrimp uh, or a pilchard and that typically will get them. If you guys are in the surf, then you are in your, in your boat casting towards the surf, you can cast small jigs, streamer flies and a bunch of other stuff. Triple tail running right now, about three to seven pounds. And I've got a picture here of Danny with a nice triple tail that we landed the other day. We sight cast to this fish. And you can see it's just at the edge of that dirty water, right off the edge of the beach. Man, those are, it. thank you for all the nice pictures this week, Jim. You did really good. One, Thanks for seeing Wanted to say one last thing, Rick. Yes, sir. Apparel. If you guys like apparel, go to the website. You can get the hats, the shirts, all the different types of things that you see Rick and Bree wearing as well. You can pick those up on the website or we'll give you keys to find out where you can get them. Absolutely. Get Thank you so much, man. We'll talk to you later. It's time for the Rodan Marine System hotspots from the Central East region. Our my man Jim says inshore the flats of the middle in of the middle and the northern portions of the Mosquito Lagoon are holding lots of redfish, use shrimp, croakers, pigfish, or assassin sea shad tails in silver mullet or green hornet colors for fish up to 30 inches. And then offshore, the gag groupers to 30 pounds from the 27 fathom ridge between Canaveral and Ponce Inlet. Use grunts, uh, pogies, or other live baits on a standard bottom rig. All right, Rick. Well, when the seas are calm, the Fish Bites East Region Surf Sesh is on. Mike, talk to us about our endless surf fishing options. That's an also a nice hat you got on right there. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. It's tarping time for us. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of surf fishing options in the summer months. Ocean is generally flat calm, so you can head out to places like Hope Sound Beach, Tiger Shores, Normandy Beach, or really any of the Palm Beach County piers. Put out a sand flea, a piece of shrimp, uh, a strip of fish bites or a fish bites easy flea, and you can catch croaker and whiting and maybe even the occasional late season pompano. Um, for the guys that like to shark fish, this is a good time of year for that. Get out on the beach. The best action is going to be around the St. Lucie Power Plant uh, or in Martin County around the House of Refuge. Um, and then if, for the guys that just like to throw short rods and lures or small baits, um, although snook season is closed, this is a great time to catch and release sight fish snook in places like the Hope Sound Wildlife Refuge or Bob Graham Public Beach or even South Beach and Fort Pierce. The best, excuse me, the best beaches for snook fishing tend to have rock piles on them close to shore that the fish will gather around. You can throw everything from bait fish pattern flies to a, a green hornet or copper juice colored saltwater sass and four inch sea shad. There's plenty of action, you know, whether you're there to catch some groceries or just have some catch and release fun. Um, beaches are amazing. So let's talk about what else is going on inshore. The summer tarpon bite is really heating up inshore in places like the north and south forks of the St. Lucie River and in Big Mud Creek in the Indian River. There's also been good action at night around the bridges like the Roosevelt Bridge and Stewart and the Jensen Beach Causeway. And then as the surf comes, you know, we'll see some fish pushing hard on the beaches and all the inlets will have fish for the next couple of months as those fish that are migrating into the area kind of stay for the month. Now for the resident fish, you can throw everything from a dark colored fly to a, a four inch sea shad or a, a live or dead mullet or a live thread fin or crab uh, around the inlets, live mullet or crabs fished on the outgoing tide or money on those fish that are eating all the stuff flowing out with the tide. Uh, the best action seems to be in the evenings after all the boat traffic has died down. Average tarp in our region is going to be like 40 to 120 pounds. I got a photo that Captain Eric Davis of Vero Beach sent me. He sent me a shot of a nice tarpon they caught up around the Vero Cove uh, out off the beach and that fish ate a live crab. Nice. Let's go offshore, Hollywood. Yeah, you know, the easterly winds this last week have really stacked up the weed lines and defined those rips and edges and that's making it easier to target dolphin. And the bite's been very consistent. We're starting to see some really nice fish. You know, those fish over 25 pounds uh, and, it, and also plenty of schoolies in the mix. Uh, so you wanna have pitch rods ready at all times 
and then have you know a piece of cup bait or live baits that you can put on those rods if, you, if a school comes up on the boat. The best action's been in 120 to 300 feet of water. The fish are spread out through the region. Start your day trolling ballyhoo or swimming mullet or a, you know a skirt and strip combination. Anything that can help you cover water. Um, you can slow troll live baits, put them out on a kite, power drift down the edges of the of the the rips and, and weed lines. Average dolphin right now is eight to 15 pounds. Captain Butch Constable of Jupiter sent me a shot of a 35, 34 pound dolphin they caught. They got that fish in 300 feet of water on a live goggle eye. Now the other offshore bite we go, got going, the summer sailfish bite, it's early. Um, it's starting to kick off. I've had several reports in the last week of anglers having multiple fish days. The bite's in 100 to 150 feet of water. The best action is between Hope Sound and the St. Lucie Power Plant, but the fish are really spread throughout the entire region. They haven't ganged up yet. They're just migrating in. The summer sails tend to be large, travel in small packs of three to six fish. So anytime you get a bite, you want to try and keep your baits in the water, see if you can get another fish or two or, you know, build multiples off of it. And you can also cast a, a bait to a hooked fish because a lot of times the sails will dog that hooked fish and you can get a bite off of that. And for bait, Anything from a sardine, threadfin, pilchard, or goggle eye to a, a blue runner or a mullet will work. You can also troll rig ballyhoo, put them out on, you know, like 60 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, average sailfish is gonna be 40 to 50 pounds. And I have a, a photo of a sail that Captain Charlie Stube of Jupiter sent me. Um, they got that sailfish in 120 feet of water on a, light, on a troll ballyhoo. All right, Mike, we always gotta have a bass report and you're our man, so what do you got this week? Yeah, dig it, man. The water levels are down on the Tahoe Kissimmee chain right now. And that's taking all the fish from the, the shoreline grass and pushing them out to the middle of the lake. I was talking to Captain Steve Nymiller of BassOnline.com. He's saying the school bass are locked in on the hatching shad. So there's this great early morning bite of the school bass around the shell beds out in the open water. You want to target those fish with bass assassin fork tail shads or split tail shads in any of the lighter colors, uh, anything that looks like, like a shad, you can throw small top water prop baits along the edges of the hydrilla, or fish like a, a crystal shad or black shad colored uh, bass assassin twitch worm, rig it weedless and just, you know, bounce it off the top of the grass and let it fall down in that little deeper water. And then as the day heats up, you wanna fish the holes in the hydrilla with everything from a Carolina rig, June bug colored RSB worm to lipless crank baits, Live shiners are your game, put a little weight on them. It's a 20 to 40 fish morning, average bass one to three pounds, and fish to seven pounds right now. Man, one and two came up with the Zoom call. We appreciate all your hard yeah. effort every week. Mike, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the TH Marine hotspots. Captain Mike says, listen, inshore dudes, we're gonna go tarpon in the North Fork of the St. Lucie River, use live mullet thread fins or pilchers, or even a four inch Houdini colored sea shad. And then if you wanna be an offshore guy, mixed bag of kingfish, dolphin, sailfish along the offshore bars, south of Fort Pierce, use live thread fins, sardines, or even a pilcher. Listen, inshore dudes. Inshore dudes. I liked it. All right, well, we are well <laughs> underway with the Shoreline Showdown Surf Fishing Tournament Series, presented by Fish Bites. Four tournaments, one championship, and over $75,000 in guaranteed payouts, plus fishing for a chance to qualify to compete for the title of the ultimate surf angler. For more information, along with the next tournament dates and locations, visit shorelineshowdown.com. All right, well, the CCA workbench is full of surf knowledge for the Fish Bites Trading Post rigs and techniques because we have master surf angler, wizard, guru, whatever you want to call it, Dave, and of course, Courtney from Fish Bites. Yes, we do, and Courtney's gonna sh run us through a whole bunch of new stuff that they got at Ooh, the Fish Bites oh Trading yeah. Post. I love new nice. stuff that comes yes. from Fish Bites. We even right. talk about that tournament that's been beating my butt. <laughs> You'll you be can the, do this. You, you're the ultimate surf angler to me, Dave. We'll yeah, do that. Well, thank you. <laughs> and then we are heading over into the Star Trek Central West region with Captain Jeff Page. Look at him there. Stay tuned. We'll be back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Sirius XM Marine. Weather. Fish mapping. Entertainment. Penn. Let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. 
Berkeley Prospect Chrome, Fish Bites Trading Post, the first choice of First Coast Anglers, and Daiquiri Deck, Food, Drinks, Friends. Well, we're here at the CCA Workbench for the Fish Bites uh, Trading Post. Rigs, Rigs and, and techniques, techniques. and Courtney yep. has got some really cool stuff to show us because you know they really they're really hard into surf fishing over there at fish bites. Oh yeah, and uh, she's got some really cool stuff. Courtney, what you got here? So we actually have a new bait that we've come out with. This is our easy shrimp. So mm -hmm. easy shrimp scent. However, we changed up the color. So we did a dual color. So this is our chartreuse shine. Right. It is shimmery. You yeah. should see it in the water. It is beautiful. Uh, again, it's got the dual color. It's the longer lasting, so it's got the mesh inside. But if you can pick up on that sparkle, it looks amazing. Yeah, that green stuff has been really killing it this year as well. Yes. And yes, what's it the has. other one you got there? So the other one is not quite out yet, but I'm going to tease it for you. So we have been working with our mad scientist. Uh huh. We've got a ghost shrimp oh. coming out. And so that's been a really hot bait across all of Florida. And we are super excited to hopefully get this released here in the next couple of months. Maybe those getting guys can put the, all those plungers away. They're getting out there ready for the fall run. Ghost That's right. We all little holes all over the place. Yeah, I said hashtag no no pump needed. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> well, we're, 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 when we're using this for bait, which mm -hmm. I always do, I always cut it up and I put it on my dropper rigs. Right. You know, I usually put a piece of bait on and then uh, uh, put my my fish baits on that my fish bites on there to make sure that my bait stays on the hook when sure. I'm making those really long casts. And when I'm making my long casts, I like to use that Spin Fisher Seven right there. It's the Spin Fisher Seven long cast reel. That's a 5500, which is a great size. I think mine are, are a little bit bigger, but I'd, mm -hmm. I'd probably prefer to have the smaller ones because they're a little bit lighter. Right. right. Uh, the 5500 IPXS rating, uh, it, which means you can drop it in the water. Uh, doesn't get wet, it's all sealed. It's got sure. you know all those six ball bearings in there, carbon drag. And what makes it a long cast is because it has a really shallow spool mm -hmm. and a long spool. It's longer than a regular one. So uh, you can really whip it and get it out there. Absolutely. Penn also makes this really cool carnage combo. This is the Fierce 4 combo. And uh, it's a surf rod that has a medium heavy action, it's nine foot. Uh, really, really good if you're want, if you're just starting out to get into right, the surf right. thing, you know, surf uh, surf fishing. Uh, eight and a half to 13 feet, they make them. I think the 13 foot ones though are kind of stronger. They're made for more like shark fishing and stuff. They're pretty extra heavy. You can pull them in. You guys also have a signature fish bites rod too, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so we have a fish bite signature series rod. We've gotten an 11 foot, a 12 foot, and we are coming out with a 13 foot. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be out soon. Well, those are really great to have, you know, and like we were saying, you know, a lot of the captains were saying before, you know, you have to have a really good set of spikes. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to use a 20 pound braid for my stuff. Some yes. guys use a little heavier. The Berkeley Prospect braid, 15 to 20 pound. I like to use a bright color that keeps the pelicans out of my, my right. line uh, when you're <laughs> that, making those. That will ruin a day. Oh, <laughs> a, a pelican can take out four <laughs> rods and all your gear and pop, 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 and then you have to reel the poor thing in if it gets it's caught tough. up in it. It's, it's no fun. And I also like to use a Sputnik sinker. Uh, I think these are the sinker, sinker guys. Sinker guy, yep. He's a really good guy. Absolutely. He works a lot with you guys. He's, he does. I see him at all the tournaments that you that you guys put yeah. on. Chip is amazing. And uh, you know, I like I like to use, like I said, this is a, a two dropper loop that I made myself. Mm -hmm. This is a mortician rig, which uh, allows you to allows those hooks to spin around on the main line. And I and I make them a little longer than most people. And I, I mainly use these type of rigs, these uh, rigs with no floats. When I'm fishing in a place up in the like the Panhandle, right. clean water. When the water is crystal clear, yep. sometimes they get a little spooky. You know, they don't like to have all the floats and stuff right. on there yep. that uh, other people have. And uh, we've got two more tournaments to go. We do have two more tournaments to go. We've got the October one in Melbourne, and then the Jensen Beach is in November. A lot closer to me this time. They are. Thank goodness. They I, are. I got to go to the Pensacola one because <laughs> my parents live up there. You know, my parents yeah. live in Fort Walton Beach area. Yeah. So. But uh, the Melbourne one will, will be great because that's my hometown and my home beach. Hopefully, I'll be able to <laughs> override my skunk that I've been riding this last two tournaments. You can do this. And uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. So yeah. Thank Just you bring, very you much. You bring for, your fish bites. Oh, it's I all will. you need. That's right. Thanks for coming in, Courtney. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. 
all you need to succeed. Courtney, you're gonna right. kill it. The babe. director's got dibs on the fish bite surf casting rod. I just wanted to tell you that. I heard him in oh. my ear. It's, <laughs> it's yours. It's amazing. It is. All right, well, you don't have to stray too far in the Star Trek Central West region for some great surf fishing. So let's get the details with Captain Jeff Page. Go for it, Page. All right. Yeah, you know, we don't have that East Coast uh, surf fishing that Dave and all them are talking about, but we we do have a good surf fishing along the beach fishing fishery. And you know what? This time of year, some of the best fishing occurs there real tight to the shoreline. So it's not like we need 13 foot rods to launch it out. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we catch in our surf is literally right up against the beach, especially when you have rocks, old pilings, down trees, and even something that's started to be more regular are big piles of moss grass that have blown in from offshore it can be that sargasm grass, it can be moss grass, but a lot of times that stuff will pile up in that last trough right up against the beach. And the snook will hold on it, the bait will hold in it. So it's a good thing to keep your eye on that moss grass. Now, as far as what species we catch, depending on the type of uh, time of year, like right now you're gonna catch snook, redfish, speckled trout, flounder, occasional pompano, but not as many in the summer as we do in the winter. Now, bait, uh, shrimp are easy to keep alive. You can keep them alive in a bait bucket in the water or with a little electric bubbler. But if you're into catching some pilchards with your cast net, which are right out there on the beach, it's a good idea to have um, like an R&R &R tackle collapsible bait pen or a good aerated box with a bubbler to keep that alive it's going to produce a lot better fishing and then of course the fish bites works real well as well and then if you're into lures a white bucktail jig rick you taught me that a long time ago smaller the better and if you're a fly fisherman a small white clouser and you want to cast parallel to the beach not out for your snook and you will see them nine times out of ten now at night you do want to get your baits out, and that's when you can use a chunk of a mullet or a jack, and you got a shot at a tarpon or a shark or a big black drum. Another cool thing to have, and they become a little more popular over here, are those big beach carts that Dave Farrell's always talking about with the big soft tires. My photo tonight is a longtime Sarasota Herald Tribune outdoor rider and land base kayak guide. Steve Gibby Gibson, who passed away a few years ago, but he was an expert at surf fishing. Staying inshore, snook with the new big moon, with the big new moon that we got this week. It ties right into our uh, our theme this week. Lots of big girl snook are right along the beaches. They're spawning, they're hungry, and they're gonna eat. Live ladyfish, big hand-picked pilchards or thread fins are probably the number one bait. If it's artificial as you like, I've had a really good luck with that 110 stick shad in the chrome or bone pattern. Inside, same game around the oyster bars on the high tide, live pilchards, pinfish, down around Bull and Turtle Bay as well. And my photo tonight is of Brother Rich Zimmerman, who's the associate pastor at Suncoast Baptist Church in Palmetto. All right, let's go offshore, bub. Offshore, red snapper, opening season. Everybody thought the waves were going to be, the weather was going to be crummy, and we've had pretty calm conditions, especially early in the morning. So get out there early, 150 feet on out, live pinfish, best bet, frozen sardines will work, and you're going to find those areas of hard bottom and ledges, and you can work those fish up with a little bit of chum, uh, chicken rig, uh, standard bottom rig and knocker rig. Captain Tim No had a great six hour night trip where, this is my photo, uh, produced all that on one six hour night trip aboard Gulf Coast Offshore Ventures. And my last species, red grouper, big red grouper bite remains strong, but they're out deeper, 110 to 200 feet of water, small areas of hard bottom, pretty much live pinfish but again frozen sardines will work standard bottom rig but my photo tonight is of captain derek engel 
with a big red grouper he got on a vertical jig, Rick. All right. Oh, Good pictures this week, Captain Page. You got it all in. I'm impressed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the beautiful daiquiri deck hotspots from the Central West region. He says, in short, the tarpon, fish the afternoon out, going tied with the live free lime or cork pass, crabs and egg mop pass, big pass, or even Boca Grand pass for good Silver King action. And then offshore permit, good schools are holding on the near shore reefs in three to seven mile range off of Anna Maria, south to Venice. Live free lime pass crabs are gonna be the best bait. Looks like we can't pass on the crab. No, never pass pa on the crabs. You should pass this, pass that. We ain't passing the buck around here though. No, nope, 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 nope that's for nope. sure. All right, the Animals Equipment Southwest region with Captain Ron Houston is next. And then we are checking in on the surf fishing in the Sea Sucker Panhandle region with Captain Pat Deneen. We'll be right back. Is. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science. Bahio, blue light blocking, radically clear polarized fishing sunglasses. Scoozy Shoes, the captain's choice for premium lightweight comfort. Sea Sucker, easy on, easy off, incredibly strong. Pen, let the battle begin. Kubota, together we do more. And the International Order of T. Roosevelt, protect your right to fish. So Bree, did you know that one oyster filters 50 gallons of water a day? I did not know that. Well, CCA's got some stuff to talk about as far as our water quality and part of it's oysters. Let's take a look. Let's see. Oyster reefs are the single most imperiled marine habitat on Earth, with over 85% of natural reefs lost. Within Charlotte Harbor, over 90% of our oyster reefs have disappeared. It's no wonder we have water quality issues. You see, the oyster is a water filtering powerhouse that removes nutrients. The same nutrients that the oysters remove fuel algal blooms. Some science suggests that this 90% loss of oyster reefs could be adding to the water quality issues we're experiencing. Red tide, blue-green algae, fish kills, toxic water, habitat loss. These are real things with real causes and real consequences. That's where a group of CCA volunteers, supporters, and staff stepped in. Once the local CCA Charlotte chapter identified that oyster restoration is what they wanted to do, we had to find the spot. One of the reasons Turtle Bay was such a great spot is that uh, right up current was an existing oyster reef. And one of the best ways for oyster larvae or spat, essentially baby oyster, to form into a new reef is to attach itself to existing oyster shells. Plus, the depth and salinity of this area was ideal for us to build a brand new oyster reef. A landlocked oyster bar in the middle of the state has become one of the most positively impactful restaurants to our saltwater estuaries in Florida. The Claremont Oyster Bar in Lake County recycles two to three tons of oyster shell every two weeks. Once the shell is separated, it is moved to a trailer and then hauled off to a section of land that Lake County government is letting CCA use. The shell will sit here for a minimum of six months to allow any bacteria or cross contaminant to dry off before being deployed. From there, they loaded it onto a barge and made the journey to Turtle Bay. At the end of the day, what we created wasn't just an oyster reef. Thanks. Yes, sir. Well done. It wasn't just something that filters water, removes nutrients, prevents red tide, prevents blue-green algae, tastes good, creates a positive economic impact, looks pretty. We built a home for the fish. What do you think? Leading the way, eh? That's amazing. It's Lots of cool. good facts, too. Yeah. All right, there are a ton of ways to take advantage of the surf fishing life in the Alto Equipment Southwest region. So let's have Captain Ronnie Houston weigh in on the topic. What's up, Ronnie? Well, you know what? There's plenty of opportunity to access our beaches and fish from the surf, actually, from Marco to Boca Grande. Now, some of these areas are going to have rock piles and blow downs, which is going to be a prime example of structure which fish will hold on. And you can see a lot of those areas right now with the water being clean. If you get a little south or west wind, 
it'll dirty up the water. You won't know where it's at. So try to figure out where those areas are at. Also, bait will stack up along the edges, actually, where the water meets the sand. And this is the time of year where it's going to start happening. You also want to look for areas of diving birds right off the beach line or birds that are just floating on top of the water. Wherever the birds are, fish aren't going to be too far behind. But for someone who might be beginning and is looking to catch anything, I strongly suggest bucktail jigs or silver spoons. Simply cast it out and retrieve. We'll catch a variety of species, including jacks, ladyfish, snook, and mackerel, for example. But you can also use cut baits, cast it out. Make sure you got enough weight to keep it on the bottom and keep the bait stationary. A start, starting this time of year, you want to look for plenty of snook to stack up on the beaches, getting ready for the spawn. And right now, with all the tarpon moving to the north, there's actually opportunity to catch tarpon while walking the beaches, not too far off the beach line. Now, still on the inshore side, the redfish. You know, Pine Island uh, Sound area and the Matlasse Pass area to the power lines. It also include the smokehouse area. You want to concentrate on fishing independent islands and mangrove shorelines with a combination of hair bait or roaming mullet. Now you're going to get to some of these areas and the redfish are going to be not too far behind once you find the combination of both these baits. Now, like I've said in the last couple of weeks, due to the tides, the mid-tides have been best because the fish are actually out from the mangrove. You can use cut baits, knocker rig, charming live pilchers, and using live pinfish. But on those lower stages, I strongly suggest artificials, be, uh, you know, Berkeley jaywalkers, hijackers, uh, gold spoons, and a variety of artificial shrimp and paddle tails. And a prime example of that is I got the opportunity to fish some fine gentlemen from Alta over the weekend. There's a couple nice redfish. Funny thing about that, I was using a smaller bait. As soon as I went to the bigger hand-sized bait, them oversized redfish started eating, and I was using pinfish, and uh, again, on knocker rigs. Now, on the offshore side, the red groupers. Now, that bite still remains steady, actually, all through the region. And as these water temps rise, and these fish are going to start keep moving in a little closer. So the reports I got from Hogwall Charters tells me you can start as shallow as 70 feet and work your way out to 100 feet. When it concentrate on hard bottom and patchy <coughs> reef areas, uh, baits of choice are going to be a variety of them right now because the bite is really good. Tides are going to depend on using cut baits or live baits on your better, on your slower tides your live pinfish, herring and pilchers, on your, you know, uh, fast-moving tides, cut squid, herring, mullet, bonita, and cigar minnows will work. You know, guys, you got to make sure you're on the bottom, you feel that bite, and a recent fish caught while fishing with hog wild charters, working this method. The last species is going to be the permit. That bite's been very consistent, actually, all throughout the year, as long as the winds aren't blowing. So concentrate on wrecks, artificial reefs, and rock piles, actually, all through the region. Still looking for big schools of fish on top. Early morning on the slicker days has been best. The artificial reefs are also holding as well as wrecks. Now you can search the public records areas for the southwest coast of Florida in the area, and it'll give you the location of these artificial reefs wrecks. Best baits have been crabs, but uh, the reports I've gotten from several captains, not just one, just have a variety. Have some live shrimp with you, have some bucktails, just in case some of these uh, permit want to get finicky. And another, uh, Fine permit catch this week while fishing with uh, hog wall charters. Guys, you know, we had some inclement weather over the weekend with the opening of Red Snapper. As soon as Monday came in and, and the weather calmed down, guys were catching Red Snappers, Red Groupers, Permits, and African Pompanos. Got a tropical wave moving in at the first of the week. Probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 80-90% of rain. So I strongly suggest listening to this report, getting out over the weekend as the weather's going to be good for that tropical wave, supposedly by the weatherman comes in first of the week. All right, Ronnie, thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the battery tender hotspots from the Southwest region. Captain Ronnie says inshore, the tarpon at the beaches and the passes, as well as the bridge spans from Fort Myers Beach all the way up to Boca Grant. And then if you wanna go offshore, African pompanos on the ledge and on the wrecks, 80 to 120 feet of water using pilchards, crabs, quarter to half ounce jigs, and maybe even a piece of cut bait. Supposedly from the weatherman. Uh, yeah, Ronnie, he's, uh, he's just doubtful about the weatherman. I couldn't tell. All right, mm -hmm. anglers, get ready for the 43rd annual Key West Marlin Tournament, July 17th through the 20th, with record-breaking payouts, legendary offshore angling, and nightly festivities in the iconic Florida Keys. A Hemingway-esque adventure awaits. So make sure you get registered at keywestmarlin.com.
We've heard great things. I know it's always going to be a fun time there. That's it. That's it. All right, the Sea Sucker Panhandle region has some great surf fishing, but let's check with Captain Pat Deneen and see when the best time is to make those long casts. Hello, Pat. Hey, hey, uh, tell you what, the best time of the year for our surf, surf fish and beach fish is definitely spring and the fall. Come summertime, the June leaf often fills in and makes, makes surf fishing kind of problematic because it, it just gunks up your, your rigs. Uh, pompano's whiting, probably the most targeted fish from the surf, uh, but also redfish, bluefish, jackervelle, and you know, occasionally a, a cobia or, or something like that is found off the beach. We are blessed with a lot of beach access throughout the Panhandle region, um, so it's easy to find a, a place to access the beach, but once you find that access point, look for a spot where, one, you don't have a whole lot of swimmers, and two, uh, where that outer bar kind of pinches in close to the, to the beach, or you've got that nice deep gully up close to the beach. Uh, two hook, two hook, uh, uh, fish, two hook chicken rig, you know, is with a pyramid sinker or, or a Sputnik sinker. It's pretty much the standard, standard, you know, uh, rig to use. Although a lot of guys do like to throw lures or spoons, you know, especially for the blue fish and the lady fish and the, and the red fish. Uh, right now, the pompano fishing is starting to taper off a little bit, but it, it still is worthwhile because like I said the water is clean and there is a photo I sent in I got from Captain City Sydney Little out in Walton County and they got that Ooh. nice bonus cobia while they're fishing for pompanos and whatnot so that's a pretty cool little extra catch right there. Yeah. Bonus. What a pretty day. Yeah that's a very pretty pretty picture but staying inshore the tarpon are starting to fill in throughout the whole Panhandle region. They're certainly most numerous in the eastern part of the region you know, basically between Mexico Beach and Crooked Island or, or Mexico Beach and and the Cape San Blast area. But they are filling in throughout the whole region. They're not swimming that fast right now. Pretty soon they're going to keep, you'll, you'll, pretty soon there'll be more fish and they'll be moving more than they are right now. I like to use an eight foot spinner rod. Uh, I got an elite series from Rick Termion. Good job, Rick. Thank you. You're uh, the 10 Authority Reel, super smooth. I float them up with 40 pound braid. I use a 50 pound fluorocarbon for the bite tippet, and then a uh, circle hook, uh, seven odd trocar type style circle hook. Live cigar mills, live herrings, if you want to fly fish for them, anchor up right there off the bar, let the fish come to you, throw toads or streamers. Um, there's a picture of a fish we caught last week that Daniel Roebuck got a Destin, and we caught that fish down off of Walton County on a spinning rod. So nice. They had a good day. Let's go offshore, Pat. Rick, offshore, the King Mackerel continues to produce throughout the whole region. They're particularly good right off of Destin right now. Everybody's getting their limits. There was a lot of schoolie kings, but most guys are coming in with a five or schoolie kings, but then they'll have one or two nice ones. Uh, live cigar mills, live, hair, live herring, herrings on a stinger rig is pretty much the standard way to go about it. Uh, a couple baits on surface, a couple baits off of down riggers. But if you don't want to do, do the bait thing that that uh, Speed Mac is a great lure for them, as well as a spoon. You just got to bump up your bump up your trolling speed a little bit, and then staying offshore, the red snapper fishing has been really good. Like Ronnie just mentioned, it was pretty rough opening weekend, but the weather has moderated. The reds are pretty much on any structure, 65 feet and deeper. Uh, two uh, cigar minnows, herrings on a slip sinker rig, 50 pound leader is pretty much the standard way to go about it. But what I like to do, I like to get on top of the spot and just start chunking with some cut baits and those snappers and black snappers as well will come up to the surface there you could actually see them eating your cut bait and you just slip them a, a <coughs> piece of cut bait uh, with no sinker small hook and and free line it down to them the, the snappers are running you know six to twelve pounds but there are some 20 20 plus pound snappers being caught right now wow those are nice snappers bud all right thank you so much we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Panhandle region. He says that inshore anchor up in eight feet of water between Crooked Island Sound and Mexico Beach. Sight cast flies or baits to the tarpon swimming west along the bar. I wish I was there doing that. And then offshore, slow troll live cigar minnows brie or herring on a stinger rig just outside of Destin's East Pass over the Broken Bottom southeast of the inlet. Alrighty, well, it's looking like we have a lot of Taco Marine new products at the CCA workbench. So, Dave, why don't you uh, give us a little sneak peek over here? What well, we got? I'm going to show you guys my favorite surf spike because I've got every one of them. 
and this seems to be my favorite now. And that is your favorite. <laughs> my favorite rotates, but this is my favorite one I, right now. I can't wait to hear why. And yeah. then we are headed to the Front Runner Boats Northeast region. We're seeing what Captain Tommy Derringer has for us on the surf. We'll be right back. All right. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Abyss Battery, power your pursuit. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, best lures, period and Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Well, we're here at the CCA workbench and it's time for the Taco Marine new products. And Dave, you certainly have a full desk. I like do. He said. Well, we're gonna start off over there with the Savage Gear Panic Pencil Popper. Uh, it's a perfect shape, you know, really long and thin for incredibly long casts has a really big, large ball bearing rattle in there that makes a lot of noise, but it also helps in that casting because it's got a nice track in there where that ball bearing can run. And when you go to make that cast, that ball bearing will transfer the weight to the far end and make it, make it sling. Yeah, it'll go a long, long way. Sling. Yeah, but, and it, you know, with that little tiny popper front and the way the body swells at the back, it gives it a really cool erratic action when you put it up on the surface you know, elicits a lot of strikes from fish that are up on the top. It'll draw them right up to the top. Comes in six different colors, two sizes, uh, six and a half inch and a five and three quarter inch and two different weights. Uh, the, they got a one and three quarter ounce and a two and three quarter ounce, so. Sexy. Yeah, yeah. I a, like it. A lot of different, a lot of different ways to work that. It's got a through wire construction, uh, triple split rings on it. So, you know, the hooks aren't going to come out and those are 4X hooks. Right. So you can hook really big fish and land big fish on there. Savagegear.com. All right. That. Next, we have the TH Marine drainable fuel filter with the water separation kit included. Uh, it's a real easy to use kit that includes the fuel filter, the drainable clear bezel, uh, the mounting bracket, and three little NYP. NPT brass plugs because when you hook this thing up you obviously it, it has four different uh, inlets and outlets in case you need to use them in different configurations and you just use those the three extra plugs to plug up the holes that you don't use. Uh, it's got a quick spin on design so you can change that filter really fast when you're ready right, to do it. Right. It's got a little drain on the bottom so if you get water in there you can just drain the water out. Um, a two cycle or four cycle it's not for diesel. You don't want to use that one for a diesel. It's got a 10 micron filter. Diesel might clog that up. So, right. Yeah. Go to TH Marine Supplies to get that. All right. Very good. Next, we have the Isla Mirada Fishing Outfitters uh, helm pad. Uh, this is the this is the large mat here. This is a for you know big center console like the one you're getting here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. A 72 inch by 14 inch by one and a quarter. It's made from a PVC, a woven PZ, PVC material that's uh, microbiobial, <laughs> I always mess that up, and it's self-draining, self-draining, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't get uh, mildew or mold in it right. because of the stuff that it's made out of, you know, it's not cloth. This uh, one is two years old, and look yeah, how it looks. Yeah, excellent, excellent cushion. I mean, your feet really will feel great on those hard pounding days going offshore, even pounding across a bay. It's great for your feet, your knees, your whole body. I wish I had had one of these when I was a younger person right? because I was getting pounded. Uh, this It also comes in a 16 by 24 and a 14 by 42. So you can get one for a little flats boat or you know a little yeah. bay boat or, or whatever make, you need. Randy makes them in all three sizes, big yeah. boat, little boat. The other thing you could do is you can customize it, put the boat name, whatever you want to right. do. Right, all those different colors and everything. It's pretty pretty cool little thing. Go to Isla Mirada Fishing Outfitters.com right. and say hi to Randy for us. All right. do that. Last but not least, I was telling people, you just told you in the break there that uh, these are my new favorite surf spikes. These are from Surf Fishing Solutions. The guys make these a husband and wife team out of Jacksonville, Brian and Chantel Corlett. Uh, really cool sand spikes because they're uh, uh, they're made out of uh, 6061 60, aluminum, makes them really light, and they're really, really strong. All welded. There are no bolts in here. A lot of the ones you buy have bolts, and when you have two different, you know, two different metals, 
you know, you get all kinds of problems when that happens. Mm -hmm. They also make custom f uh, fishing carts and cart accessories as well. But these are 52 inch bikes. Um, and uh, they they make two different kinds. This one is the angle. It's got the one and one and one and a half inch angle mm -hmm. and a step. And this thing, once you get it in there, it does not come out. And it, it it'll it'll go in just about anything. I, I like to use it. They also have the one with just the the spike on it. Mm -hmm. And this is great for when you when you're down in the in the wash in the wash in the where the water's moving. This one won't wash out. This one may wash out, although I've never had this one wash out. This one will not wash out. This one has the peg for you to stand on. You can stand on these things and push them right into the ground. You don't have to use a hammer or anything like that. And I like them because they're very strong and they're very light and all my rods fit in them in that big tube. Yeah. So you can go to Facebook, Surf Fishing Solutions is where they're at now. They're starting up a website, surffishingsolutions.com. All right. Good tell stuff, them, gentlemen. Tell them Dave sent you. Yep, and Father's Day is coming up, oh, so yeah. all of that stuff on the table, great gifts, just saying. That's all right, it. there are so many advantages to surf fishing in the Front Runner Boats Northeast region, even if it means you're not catching. So let's find out what they are with Captain Tommy Derringer. Thanks for all the help last week, Tommy. Yeah, Bree, thanks. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for being uh, such a big help, as you always are when I come down there. And uh, happy birthday to the birthday boy. Well, thank you, birthday, Mr. Rick. Tommy. Thank you. Yeah, man. Well, you know, we're all about the surf fishing here in the Front Runner Boats Northeast region. You know, like Bree was saying, one great thing about surf fishing is that it's accessible to everyone and you really don't need a boat. And if the fish aren't biting, you can still go for a swim. You can build a little sand castle. You can have a little drinky poo. And still have a great time at the beach. Doesn't even matter if you're catching them. But even though surf fishing can be pretty easy, uh, it's an easy way to get out there and get fishing. There's some things you can do to up your chances of catching some nice fish, having the right equipment, it allows you to make an extra long cast. That can be a key in getting your bait to the right spot. And just about every great surf fishing angler I've ever spoke to has told me that that long cast is going to be key. Now, depending on conditions, you're probably going to want to place your bait in the trough or sometimes right where the waves are crashing. What I've been told is when the waves crash, it's going to stir up the bait in that area. That's where the fish like the pompano and the whiting and all those kind of things are going to be hanging out. I did get a few beach reports this week, and it sounds like there's some action happening out there in the surf. They've been catching a few pompano, but the whiting bite has been pretty good. Um, the bluefish were thick, and they're kind of slowed down a little bit, but the jacks are out there, and they've picked up the slack um, from where the bluefish left off. And the sharks, man, there's tons of sharks out there. Now, the best baits for the pompano and the whiting, they've been the, it's been the fish bite strips and the crab flavor, as well as live sand fleas if you can find them. And the blues, the jacks, and the sharks, those guys are all eating live and cut mullet, or ladyfish is even better if you can get that. Now, staying on the inshore side of things, the flounder, man. The flounder bite continues to be strong throughout the region this week. It's really picked up. I've seen and heard of quite a few uh, impressive flounder catches this week. The late afternoon, last of outgoing tide, um, has been the ticket for the flatties this week. Mud minnows or small finger mullet. Um, or even a shrimp rigged either on a heavy jig or a fish finder rig. That's the way to go for those guys. I like to target the small runouts along the ICW or in any of the bigger creeks, but, but fish the smaller runouts. Look for those little places where the bait's gathering up. The jetties also at Mayport and St. Augustine, they've been holding good numbers of flounder all around the slack tide or the last of that outgoing tide. I did speak to Captain Rob Bennett from CoastalFish.net. He's always on some nice flounders, it seems. And he tells me the docks around downtown St. Augustine have also been holding some good fish. And then my good buddy, Captain Buzz Brandon from Northeast Florida Angling, he's been on a good flounder bite around some of the industrial docks and the riprap around Mayport in the St. Johns River. Now he's been using those same live baits I just talked about, but he's also been doing really well using that Fish Bites Dirty Boxer in white rigged on a 3 8 ounce jig, a pretty heavy jig. He's fishing some deeper water up there. And I've got a photo here. Captain Rob Bennett from CoastalFish.net, he sent me this picture of his client, Jake Ferry, with a doormat flounder he caught right near downtown St. Augustine. Nice. Now, moving offshore, the mango, man, the mango bite has really turned on uh, over the last couple of weeks, coming off that big full moon we had. Now, this week with the new moon, look for those mangoes to be schooled up again offshore. Uh, I spoke to Captain Shane Stover, and he told me he's been on a fantastic mangrove snapper bite 
He's fishing in about 120 to 140 feet of water, uh, just northeast of Ponce Inlet. Uh, Captain Shane said chumming um, has been really effective, but the sharks have been so dang thick that sometimes the better way to catch them is just to send a bait down to the bottom. Uh, uh, Shane did say that he's had a few days where he's had the mangoes chummed up to the surface using cut sardines, um, and they've been some. There's been some really big mangrove snapper around. So the average fish has been in that eight to ten pound range, with a few fish even over about 13 pounds, which is an absolute monster. And speaking of monsters, I got a picture here. Captain Shane sent me this <laughs> picture of a 14 pound mangrove snapper he caught this week. Just say it, Rick, say it. That, that's bringing home the snapper right there, Tommy. <laughs> Damn. I, I knew you were going to say that. It's, it's that on my shirt, Tommy. Wait till true. you see the show. <laughs> now, staying offshore, guys, kingfish. I got a quick kingfish report again for you this week. The kings, are they're getting it, man, along the beach right now and on the near shore reefs. Slow trolling the pogies, like always, that's been the go-to method. I did speak to our good buddy from Fish Bites, Scott Jones. He's been on a killer kingfish bite. He said most of the kingfish, they're running about 15 to 25 pounds, but there's some bigger fish being caught, and there's some big tournaments coming up for those beach fish, so I know they're looking for those guys. Scott said that trolling pogies up top and about 30 to 50 feet along the beach has been great, but also don't forget to put one on the downrigger as well. And I've got one last picture. Scott Jones sent me this picture of his wife, Leslie, with a nice kingfish they caught right along the beach there in Jacksonville. King and yeah, queen. That's Love right. It. Two smokers in one shot. Way to go, man. All right, dude. <laughs> that's right. All right, tell Scotty we said hello. It's gonna, we're going to have time to take a look at the strike zone hotspots from the Northeast region. Tommy says inshore, the flounder at Mayport and St. Augustine and then at Jetties and the docks and seawalls fish the last of the outgoing or the early morning first of the incoming for those flounders and then offshore kingfish along the beaches throughout the entire region slow troll those live bogeys what you got two smokers in one show you hey, just man. had to have the last word didn't yep. you yeah she's didn't so ya? pretty king and queen was not enough for you all nope. right so rick as we're talking surf fishing did you know that a cca at florida star tagged redfish was caught off the beach a few years ago i didn't know that yes and you can not only potentially land a tagged redfish but all of the fish you catch while surf fishing can be entered in the cca at florida star competition presented by yamaha plus pick up a full five gallon bucket of trash from the shore and enter it in the trash division for additional prizes. There's still time to register and earn a shot at your share of $500,000 in prizes and scholarships, so make sure you go to CCAFLstar.com to get registered right now. That's All right, right, we're getting our report in from the Takeuchi Keys region, but first, we're seeing what our captain in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region is finding at the beach, and his name is... Captain Jeff Hagman. And remember to keep up with everything fishing in Florida. Scan that QR code on your screen for all of our social media pages. Also to access our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy, plus our website, which has our merchandise shop. Check it out and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Front Runner Boats, performance built offshore fishing boats made in the USA. Takeuchi, from world first to world leader. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and Strike Zone Fishing. Welcome back. In the Discover Crystal River Northwest region, we're heading to the beach or we're getting our feet wet this weekend. So let's see what Captain Jeff Hageman recommends based on your location. Talk to us, hi. Well, we got some great surf fishing and some great wading. Uh, great way to fish our region, can be very stealthy. And a good pair of waders, wading boots, and an old pair of sneakers is a great way to protect your feet. We got a lot of sharp rocks, oysters, um, you want to protect your feet from the farther you north you get in my region. Um, we also have some great beach fishing and surf fishing. The south part of my region and the very northern part of my region in the summer months um, hold good pompano and whiting in the southern part of my region. Snook along the beaches can be very good and along the passes too. Uh, for the snook you want to fish along, you want to fish parallel with the beach. They're going to be in that first bit of the swath channel of the beach right where the waves crash. 
that's where you're going to find the snook. The pompano and the whiting are going to be a little bit out further or in the passes. And all the stuff you guys have been hearing about all over the state is going to work there. Pompano jigs and pompano rigs will all work for whiting and pompano. Sand fleas are a great bait. As far as snook goes, along the swash channel, sardines, uh, any kind of white soft plastic will work really good. Um, and in the northern part of our region, you're going to need a kayak or a boat to get, kind of get to your wading spots. Especially around the, in the wintertime, the new and the full moon, so you get those super low negative tides and can make extremely good fishing. And you can see the bottom contour and the deeper water is going to hold those fish and concentrate them in those channels and little bays that it creates in the water depth columns. Staying inshore, our tarpon fishing along our coast is in full swing right now. Bridges, passes, beaches, grass flats are all holding fish right now and can be caught on spin, plug, or fly. Top water baits, um, the top five baits and thread fins, crabs, pinfish are all working well. As far as flies go, game changers in black or pur black and purple are working really well, or a lemon drops over the sand here on the beach. And plugs, soft plastics will also do the trick. I got a photo here of Holly and Andrew with Holly's first tarpon we caught last week. Oh, congrats, nice. Holly. Way to go, That's Holly. Awesome. Welcome to the that club. Was first, that was her first. She's hooked now. All right. Okay. Tell us about moving the offshore. Off, yeah. Moving offshore, Captain Rob Davenport of Big Nasty Charters out of St. Pete. Of course, a good mangrove snapper bite right now. He's using a four-hot trocar circle hook with a four-ounce four egg sinker rigged like a knocker rig. 40 to 60 pound fluorocarbon leader and he's been finding most of the big ones in 100 to 150 feet of water. Live bait has been the choice. Uh, live sardines and small pinfish. Right now you can target mangroves on that new and full moon. We got a new moon right now. The full moon's coming up in another 14 days so it'll be a good time to get out there. You're usually spawning, usually big numbers of them and they're getting together. And I got a photo here of a really nice one with Captain Krista. Nice. All right, what Good else you got? Right there. Love yeah, those things. great fish. Captain Rob Davenport also reports a good black fin tuna bite right now. The black fin tuna have been showing up in 140 feet of, plus feet of water pretty regularly. Vertical jigs over wrecks and bait schools. Anytime you're bottom fishing, keep your eye on your bottom machine. There's a little trick he uses. When they start showing up in that higher in that water column, drop those jigs down. Or you can drop some live baits out the back of the boat and chum them up. Or look for, for them crashing under frigate birds right now. All right, bub, that was a good report. Went through there pretty nice and clean and smooth. Appreciate all the energy. We're gonna go and take a look at the Ozella Key Marina hotspots from the Northwest region. He says, in short, snook around the beaches in the passes. Use live pinfish or sardines on the outgoing tide. And then if you wanna go mangrove snapper fishing, on the high relief structures in 30 to 70 feet of water, use cut sardines on a knocker rig with an eagle claw laser sharp 3-0 circle hook breed. All right, Rick, the Takeuchi Keys region is full Takeuchi. of fish catching potential. So let's see what Captain Ridge Murphy has us getting into this weekend. What's up, Ridge? You know, when it comes to surf fishing, the Keys doesn't have very many public beaches to offer. We do have a few beaches in Bahia Honda State Park and down in Key West, but they cater more to family days and not so much fishing. Um, what is happening though in the also equipment region is snappers. Mangrove snappers in the backcountry, in the moats, around the islands, in the trenches between the flats and on the edges of the banks. They're all congregating in Florida Bay and they're getting ready to move offshore within the next few weeks or so. But right now you want to get out there with a chum bag, some big live shrimp for cut bait, and some light spinning rods. You want to free line these baits in the chum slick with the bail open and you wait for them to take some line. You feed them a little longer than expected, 45 seconds or slow, so, and then slowly get tight on that Eagle Claw 3-0 Circle C hook. And then you want to crank fast and keeping his head out of the grass. The sharks are kind of bad, so have a wire rod ready. You want to hook that shark and it'll buy you a little more time. That way you can catch a couple more snappers. I have a photo of a box full of snappers from our charter the other day. It was really good. Um, nice fish. Yeah, man, he did good that day. I want to go do some He's, of that for Father's Day. Yeah, all we needed was some grease. All right, so what do we else we got in shore, Bob? Snook fishing has been on fire in the backcountry of Isla Mirada and into Florida Bay. 
work down the edges of the flats and the sandbars, throwing bass assassin PNBs or five inch jerk baits, and a quarter ounce to three ounce jig head with a 30 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. Look for structures like dead trees or potholes. And a good indicator of fish being in the area is lots of bait busting or pelicans diving on the schools of bait. Work the edges of the bait balls with those bass assassins and the snooks will be keying in on them pretty good. I got another photo of a customer of mine with a nice snook that we caught up on the flats not too long ago. Nice, all right, let's go offshore, Rich. I'm still talking about snappers here in the auto equipment region, mutt snappers on the deep wreck. 180 to 250 feet, dirt, drifting or anchoring, sending baits to the bottom with long leaders, 25 to 30 foot leaders, uh, with a 5-0 eagle claw circle hook on a 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. Valley hoop plugs, bonita strips, live filters, pin fish, cigar minnows will also work. Try to use minimal weight, eight ounces to 16 ounces, depending on the current. And then I do have another photo of of a big, nice big mutton snapper that we caught aboard the Spartan Charters out of Bud and Mary's, was captained by Trevor Newman. All right, what else, mahis? Mahi mahis are, are still around. I spoke to Captain Sammy Malazzo and he says from 650 feet to 900 feet of water, there's as many schoolies as you can ask for. You're gonna have to run and gun, looking for the birds and looking for debris, but once you find them, you should have some good luck. Troll ballyhoos or an R&R &R mahi magnet, and then throw chunk baits or live filters to them. And you want to take your time, guys. One by one, shake them off into the box, and then that keep that cycle going. You want to free up a rod and get that rod back out into the water. You'll get your limits that way. I have a photo of a good client of mine, uh, Tom Flagg, with a nice mahi that he got with me and Chase on our last offshore trip. All right, Ridge, before we go to your hot spots, I do have a question for you. You know. You mentioned in your mutton part of your report, you talked about a ballyhoo plug. Tell everybody what a ballyhoo plug is and how you make it. So you want to cut the tail off. Some guys will take the backbone out and kind of butterfly it a little. You don't always have to, but if you use a live ballyhoo and then cut the tail off and cut the head off, a lot of times the nerves will keep those baits still wiggling really good. And so it gives it that it gives it enough movement to where it's not going to get too far away, but it's, it's, it's enough movement to make these fish really get keyed in and, and go kind of crazy for them. You want to just hook it right in that chunk of the tail, meet that little thin part of the tail, and uh, you're going to cut the actual tail off, but you're going to use that little triangle part. That's where your hook's going to go, and then the fat end's going to be where he's going to eat it and start chucking it down. So you're going to give him a couple seconds. Um, and then come on tight, you know, a nice and slow retrieve until you get tight and then rip them up as fast as you can because the sharks are going to come. Yeah, that's a, that's a fact. So you just mentioned something about look for the birds in regards to the mahis. Which way do you want to see to catch that big fish, bub? Which way they're working? You want them to go from east to west. And so it's kind of in the regular parts of the state, it's all north and south. So you got to kind of remember that east ends up becoming your north and your west ends up become your south, so you want to be working down that way, um, down the edge. So if they're going down the edge, you're going to be good. If they're going up the road, they're going to be shorter fish. You know, they're going to be a lot smaller. They're going with the current. When they're going against the current, those are going to be your bigger fish. All right. Well, thanks for clearing us up on that and getting educating us even that much I'm more so out of the Florida Keys educated. region. All right, bub, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at your hot spots. Ridge says that inshore snook fishing in Florida Bay on the structure and the bait balls pull uh, the shorelines and the edges of the flats throwing bass assassin jerk baits on a quarter or a 3 8 ounce jig head. And then offshore he said, mahis, you gotta go do it. 600 to 900 feet of water, look for those birds, weed lines and debris. Guess what, troll an RR mahi magnet or a rig valley hoop for some of those schoolies and have that rod ready there, Bree. I'm so glad you brought that up because I always forget about the directional birdie tip that he just gave. Yeah, I man, always forget to look for that. Me too. I get out there, I get it's turned so around, excited. I don't pay any attention, eating my Dion's chicken. All right. Next thing you know, big dolphin noise. <laughs> oh, next thing you know. All right, now it's time to check out some tournaments going on in the Florida Keys. First up is Marathon's 38th annual Father's Day Dolphin Derby set for June 14th and 15th with cash and prizes awarded to angling teams catching the top four heaviest mahi-mahi. Next is the University of Miami Sports Hall of Fame and Museum Celebrity Fishing Tournament set for June 20th through the 22nd in Island 
Isla Mirada with notable personalities in attendance. Cash prizes are on tap for the top three teams catching the highest combined weight of three mahi. Then we have the Key West Gator Club Dolphin Derby June 21st through the 23rd with cash prizes totaling $15,000. Go Gators! And finally is Isla Mirada Fishing Club Captain's Cup Dolphin Tournament June 26th through the 27th in Isla Mirada, which is a winner-take-all grand prize of up to $25,000 that will be awarded to the team that posts the highest aggregate weight of three Mahi Mahi. For more information on these Keys tournaments and more, head to flakeys.com. But you know, Rick, as we all hit the road this summer, make sure you show your support for Florida Fisheries with a Conserve Florida's Fisheries license. Plate. Funds from the sale of the redfish tag directly support protecting and enhancing marine resources, habitat restoration, water quality, and coastal environmental education. Remember, your $25 redfish tag helps ensure our marine resources will be here for future generations. Make sure you get yours now at your local DMV or redfishtag.com. Bree, you got one yet? No. I'll pay for the upgrade. You'll pay for the upgrade? Yeah, get it. Well, this would be a good Father's Day gift as well. Just All saying. Right. Again. All right, get ready for our last surf fishing spot for this week in the Casa Vieja Southeast region with Captain Jimbo Thomas. He might have it. He might not. It's probably good. It's probably not. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a roller coaster. We'll be back. <laughs> the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Island Lures. Tournament Tackle. The IGFA. Every fish, every water, every angler since 1939. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. 30 years of fishing for adventure. Berkeley Pro Spec Chrome. Real Legends. Available at bellsflorida.com. And Taco Marine. Master the Catch. Today's Powerful Tip is all about the new Powerful One Pump. Several years ago, we had a goal to operate two Powerful Anchors off of one single pump. We looked at every pump manufacturer here in the United States and overseas, and we got the same answer from all of them. It's impossible to run two poles off of one pump in the same space. But you know Powerful specializes in making the impossible possible. So today, I'd like to show off our new Powerful One Pump machined out of billet aluminum right here in Tampa Bay. All of the valves and engineering from two pumps is built into this one single footprint. It has a new quick release valve with a spring loaded pin that's easy to get in and out of the boat. It's so good, it saves half of the space in your boat. It cuts down on your install time and it uses 41% less amp draw. The powerful one pump is precise, it's smooth and it's quieter than ever before. To learn more about the One Pump, go to PowerPole.com, and that's your PowerPole tip. All right, well, Captain Jimbo Thomas is laying down the surf fishing law in the Casa Vieja Lodge Southeast region. So let's see what he has to say on the topic. Tell us the good, the bad, and the ugly, Jimbo. I know you will. Oh, yeah, all the above. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of uh, shore fishing here in the Southeast region. I wouldn't necessarily call it surf fishing. Now, most of the beaches throughout the region, they're fishing friendly, but you definitely want to get out there early before that beach gets too crowded. You don't need long surf rods because most of these fish are going to be right up close to the beach in the trough that runs right off the beach, so not necessarily way out there in the surf. Now, in the fall, bait will be coming right down that, the coastline, chasing those, those bait fish or typically tarpon, snook, jacks, barracudas, sharks, and they can all be targeted using uh, medium spin outfits. Good pin outfits going to be the best. You can use both live and artificial baits. And then throughout the rest of the year, you want to look for any signs of bait. And typically there's going to be snook, tarpon, and jacks following that bait fish. And you want to use live baits that, are, you know, whatever they're eating or artificials that are going to imitate what they're chasing. Now, as far as weight fishing goes, a lot of the bottom fishing is like quicksand and uh, you might sink down to your neck, so you gotta be careful there. But there's a couple of spots that are decent. One is Matheson Hammock, which has good weight fishing for bonefish, sea trout, and barracuda. You wanna fish on either the north or, or south sides of the park. 
And uh, then you can fish off Hobie Beach along the Rickenbacker Causeway on the south side. And there's bonefish and tarpon caught there fairly commonly. And there are also plenty of other areas. You just got to get out there and experiment, find the best spot. Now, staying inshore, sea trout are being caught in pretty decent numbers in the south end of the Lake Worth Lagoon and also in the north end of Biscayne Bay. These trout, they're being caught around schools of small bait. So you want to look for bait activity, pilchers, glass minnows, and anywhere from three to eight feet of water. A lot of times there's going to be bird work, birds working over those bait fish to point them out for you. And fish with small live baits under a popping cork or a gold, gold shrimp on quarter rounds jig head. And most of these trout have been in the 15 to 20, out, uh, 20 inch range with larger ones mixed in. There's also been some mangrove snappers, jacks, and ladyfish mixed in in those same areas. Now, moving offshore, dolphin fishing has definitely been picking up. There's been a few of them caught along the edge of the Gulf Stream, along with sailfish and blackfin tunas on the live baits. But a little bit further offshore, dolphin are being found in the 400 to 1200 foot range around floating debris, uh, scattered seaweed, and also under birds. Uh, we've been trolling rig ballyhoo, small lures like r and ma- mahi magnets until we find the fish. Once we do, we're pitching small live baits and cut bait, like cut ballyhoo, cut bonita, and that's after we find them on the troll. Now, most of these fish have been schoolies in roughly the four to five pound range, but there have been a few larger ones found mixed in with those small ones. Got a photo here. This is Mike from Pine Island with a nice dolphin he caught last week. Nice. That's nice. one of the bigger ones. Yeah. Nice. But, uh, and then also the tuna bite continues along the edge of the Gulf Stream, anywhere from 120 to 250 feet of water. Don't be afraid to fish in green water, but if you can find some blue water in North Current, that's where the best fishing is going to be. You want to fish live baits under the kite or on the drift. That's the best way to target these big black fins. They've been anywhere from 25 to 30 pounds. There's even been some larger ones also caught. You want to use light leaders like 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leaders, 3.0 to 6.0 circle hooks. And they have been biting throughout the day, but the best bite is going to be late in the afternoon from 4 o'clock roughly until sunset. And if you can find enough pilchers to live chum with, that'll help get them fired up. Got another photo here. This is a fan of the show ryan robertson with the nice black fin that he caught off boca inlet jimbo wow i know batting cleanup is way past your bedtime but you're probably over there at the fishing club having a beer or two thank you so much for all your hard work and batting cleanup for us we're gonna go take a look at the black oak led hot spots jimbo says inshore the fish uh mixed bag for sea trout jacks mangrove snappers ladyfish using small live baits on any of the grass flats that are holding bait. And then offshore, drift, uh, slow troll, or kite fish, live herring, sardines, goggle eyes along the edge of the Gulf Stream at 90 to 250 feet of water for a mixed bag of blackfin tuna, sailfish, mahis, and that kingfish. All right, well, our time is up, and we hope you've sharpened your skills and feel ready to hit the sand with fleas and fish bites in your hand. But we'll be back after the short break to let you know what will be in your hand next week on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. I'll be right back. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Most people think fish bites is just for the surf and piers. Well, not anymore. 
Whether you fish inshore for snook, trout, redfish, flounder, bonefish, or tarpon, Fish Bites has a bait for that. If deep dropping or jigging offshore is your game, you can use Fish Bites Easy Baits, Fish Bites Fight Club Grubs, or our newest offshore bait to get those snapper, grouper, tog, or tile fish in the boat. Try Fish Bites and set the hook. Get ready to cast off into the world of adventure with our exclusive line of fishing shirts and hats, inspired by your favorite fishing shows. Designed for the dedicated angler in you, our high-performance gear is guaranteed to keep you cool and comfortable. Join the ranks of your favorite fishing pros and reel in the excitement. Be an insider, fish like a pro, dress like a legend. Shop your favorite brands of Sportsman's Adventures, Florida and Texas Insider Fishing Reports today at store.rmmedia.com. Make sure you tune in next week because we are talking, say it Rick. Red snappers. Red snappers. I might have to wear my shirt. We gotta bring the snapper shirt back. I'm gonna wear it again next week. I will Look wash it. Look at this it. shirt. I know. Snappers. That's for you your got birthday. Me on there with my me goatee. And me. And and Rick, do we yep. need to sing happy birthday or what? Sing it. Snappers. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. when you've been out in the sun your whole life, though. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Happy birthday, Rick. Thank you. Have fun in the surf, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Dave.